Hey, it's Peter from Guitar Smarts. We're going to be flat picking a Christmas tune, showing you the best approach and why. Let's get started. So why flat pick a Christmas tune? Well, the season is coming. I'm shooting this in October and uh, it'll be soon upon us. It's amazing what you can do when you add another guitar and another guitar and so on and so on. Endless fun at that point. So before we get to the eggnog, let's do a scale warm-up. The D major scale, open, two, four, and that's all on the D string. Open, two, four. Open G, second on the G. Open B, second on the B, third on the B. You'll notice my index finger of my left hand, my cording hand, is in second position, or my index is in the second fret. That tells me what position I'm in. The D major scale. And don't forget you can download the free PDF lesson that comes with this video at the very bottom in the description box. So why play a scale when you really want to play the Christmas tune? Well, all tunes, all melodies come from scales. Omelets come from eggs. You definitely have to crack those eggs to get the omelet. You definitely have to play some scales to really feel comfortable playing a tune. So the D major scale, try it slowly. One beat per note. Repeat on the way down. Best practice is to alternate picking as you go through the scale. Once you're comfortable playing the D major scale at that speed, Crank up the tempo a bit. And if you really feel energetic, D chord at the end. Now, before you have some of that peanut brittle, check where your fingers are going. In second position, I noticed in the tab that zeros, twos, and fours are the common, common numbers. So I've got my twos covered by my index finger in the second fret. I've got my fours covered by my ring finger in the third fret. My opens are open. So the last note being at the top, the three is covered by my middle finger. So my index and ring are doing most of the work. My middle finger comes into play at the very end. Okay, we're going to look at angels we have heard on high. If you'll notice, I've included the first eight measures of the tab there. The actual notation is at the very top in case you have a flute player or a singer or a piano player that wants to play along. I'm going to play through all eight bars for you just to give you a sense of how it goes. Two, three, four. So in order to properly approach the tune, the best way to do this is A, what hand position do I need to be in so that I don't have to move that hand if I don't have to? Well, so far in the first eight bars, if we stay in second position, we don't have to move our hand, our recording hand at all. The second thing is I did a quick survey. So what are the lowest and the highest notes or numbers on my tab? Well, the lowest ones are zero. We know that, so we will play them with an open string. There they are, zero, zero, and zero. And what are the highest ones? So far the highest is four, so I know I'm only going to have to use my ring finger to play that fourth note. And there is a three in there, as I mentioned before, on the scale. So will I have to move my hand during this tab, my cording hand? So far in the first eight measures, we've got it all covered. We don't have to move at all. Long as we are in second position, we are good to go. So here we go. We're going to play Angels We Have Heard on High first eight measures one more time. Second position, not moving the hand. Zero and four are the lowest and highest. There are a few twos in there as well. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, as a summary, remember, you've got to crack eggs to make omelets. I don't know how many times that phrase has been used, but it's true. In order to play melodies, you're going to have to crack a few scales. Get used to playing the D scale, the G scale, the C scale, and if you get really adventurous, the A scale, and so on. And also remember that melodies come from scales, normally rearranged scales, with some additions and some deletions. It's that simple. Never underestimate the power of being able to play a scale correctly and what it can do for you in your flat picking. Playing tunes with this. And remember that flat picking is a separate and unique skill unto itself. And like finger style, broken chord playing and strumming, it's one of the four basic and essential techniques of all guitar playing. So don't be shy about trying all four of those techniques to get the full experience on playing this beautiful instrument. So thanks for checking out part one. Part two of Flat Picking a Christmas Tune is coming to you in a few days, where we'll be looking at the rest of the tune and how to play that in the best possible way. There are also some classic Christmas song collections at the guitarsmarts.com site. Check them out. I'm Peter from Guitar Smarts. I'll see you on part two of this video series. Thank you.